So a lot of people want to know about dust free options and how to keep the dust down. And I believe the best way to do that is just um, don't create dust in the first place. Vacuum dust. Use this here as a considered a Japanese saw or a jam saw. Um, I use that to trim this. You could use a fine saw, a fine tool. I have several of those, but I did not bring one. So, um, and these knots are a little bigger than we thought to cut off. So. Um, just be thoughtful. A lot of people want to try to mitigate dust later, but they already created a big mess. So this is a very clean home, but normally, and I probably even will in here, I'm going to come in here with a leaf blower right after masking when I finish everything. And I'm going to leaf blow from the lights and the walls and just make sure lightly, I don't want to disrupt her decoration in here, but I want to make sure there's no um, debris that's going to land in this during the cure. So, but one big part of that is just not creating dust in the first place. One thing a lot of people want to, um, mask first. I don't like a bunch of dust stuck to my masking because when epoxy drips off, it will disrupt stuff. And um, the plastic often has static electricity to it, which will really stick that dust. So make sure you do anything that's going to create dust first. Get that all vacuumed up, cleaned up, and then mask your job off. You'll have nice clean masking plastic. Just shave it while it's wet. Kind of shape it. Then you won't work near as much with a sanding block. I always make sure this is dust free underneath first so the tape sticks well. Then put a good adhesive back tape underneath here. Okay, we're always going to pour the upper raised portion first, folks. Um, and as soon as the dripping stops, we'll be able to pour the base layer. It's really important that we do something simple so we can be on an exact recipe. That'll kind of give us a little bit of skirt to fold out. If that makes sense. You can always double it back like this. If you stop right at the end of your countertop, you're not going to have enough product, paper to, or plastic to pull out to actually protect your floor. I'm going to pin my corner here. The more organized you are with masking, the better off your job will go. You really want the air out from behind the masking plastic so that it doesn't poof up and kind of get in your way while you're walking and stick to yourself and all that. So definitely take your time as you pull this out to swipe the actual air out of it. It'll have static and stick to the wall nicely. This here, you'll see where I made this little pleat. This little extra pleat will give us some excess material here for our corner. See, if I didn't have this pleat here, I wouldn't have the extra material here to make a little skirt. So, take your time pushing the air out and pinning it in place. So you're not fighting it once there's epoxy dripping on it.
shaping or cutting or setting it. It's important to keep your roller out from that edge. You don't want to be right up against it. And you want to let that berm slowly relax into the edge. If you push it right where it needs to go, often it's too high. So, if you notice that. Now I'm going to angle my roller so I can start drawing out the excess of weight. Much better. 